Omakem, only give all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Kakodesh, the bonus to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, who teach and rule well, and Shalom to the sincere Akim's punish truth and sincerity. Shalom. In, uh, in this lesson, and I want to talk about how nations are determined by the men, not by the women, nor by the appearance. You see? So, um, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to grab the book of Numbers. And showed that you know when they uh, assembled the whole congregation of the nation of Israel, you know, when they did that, you know, they did so by the men after the families according to the farthest seed line. So this is Numbers, the first chapter, in the 18th verse. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigree after the families by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their pole. You see, so this shows you that, you know, it's the man that basically, um, you know, establishes a, a nation or a seed line. You know, because if you look at the word pedigree, it basically goes into an ancestry line, you know, lineage, being descended from someone. Also, if you look at the uh, uh, family trees, you know, the majority of those family trees go go by the men, you know. But in this day and age, you know, everything is turned upside down and you might have, uh, you know, females, you know, that, that it goes according to their females' line, you know. But, you know, in actuality, it's supposed to be according to the father's seed line. You know, because the father gives the seed and the, the, the mother basically receives the seed. It's the same thing. With the, uh, with having an, uh, an an apple tree, you know, apple seed from an apple tree, you know, planted into uh, into the soil of China. Is it gonna change, you know, basically what what the what the tree comes comes out as? No, it's still gonna be an apple tree, only the soil that it grew up in, you know, is from is from China. The same thing is going on with the with the seed of man. You know, the man determines the seed line, and once it has been um, uh, basically planted into the soil of the women or the females, you know, it grows, but it remains that, you know, that what the man was. You know, so it might look like the mother, you know, it might look like a mixture of both, but in the end, it still remains that which the man is. You know. And I'm going to grab, uh, grab a scripture for that as well in the book of Exodus. Because in the book of Exodus, we can see an example, you know, concerning why, um, you know, because the example and, and the explanation that I basically gave, you know, uh, shows you why Pharaoh told the, uh, told the midwives to kill all the Hebrew men children, you know. And, uh, you know, because, uh, let me just um, read this. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 8. Now there arose up a king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. You know, because, you know, when Joseph was basically uh, uh, made to being the second highest, you know, in the, uh, in the kingdom of Pharaoh, you know, eventually he died, you know, and... Uh, you know, the, the new king that rose up, they, 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 he, he knew nothing about Joseph and the things that he had done, you know. So verse 9, And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mighty than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass, that when there falleth out any war, that they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. You know, so basically Pharaoh was like, Hey, you know, we need to deal wisely with these people. We need to put them in, you know, in slavery, put more rigor on them. Lest, you know, a war breaks out and they join onto our enemy because they are so many and they're so strong. And they defeat us and basically escape. You know, verse 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. You know, the children of Israel, you know, they are the ones... That built the uh, basically built the built the pyramids in the time of uh, Egypt, you know. And this says Pithom and Ramses, and who are the Israelites? So could Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but also those who were scattered among the heathen nations, 
that might look like hidden nations, but it really does go back to Abraham, Isaac, according to the father's seed line. You know, and, and, and this lesson is going into how a nation is determined by the man, trying to prove that it doesn't matter what you look like in this day and age, you can still go, you, you, your, your family lineage can still go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, meaning you are an Israelite, you're the chosen people of Yahweh, Bashem, and Hoshea. You see? But, you know, going back to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, uh, um, chapter 1, verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. So the more, so the more they, 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 they um, how do you say it, afflicted us, you know, and put more rigor on us, the more we as a nation multiplied, you know, because, you know, basically sex is a, is, is, is a thing of, you know, um, relieving stress, you know, so the more stress they put upon us, the more we had sex, and the more we multiplied. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, with hard bondage, you know, very, very painful and very bad, you know, uh, ways that we were treated. Verse 14, And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. And all the service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name was Shifra, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill them. But if it be a daughter, then shall she live. Then she shall live. And why was that? Because um, Pharaoh, you know, basically the, the king of Egypt, he knew that you know a nation is determined by the man. So as long as we had men, you know, amongst our nation, we were able to multiply and have our a nation be intact. You know. Verse 17, but the midwives feared the Most High and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as Egyptian women, for they are lively, and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. You know, so basically they were... Uh, lying against uh, Pharaoh and telling them like, hey, the children are already born before we come in, you know. Verse 20, therefore the Most High dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and worked very mighty, you know. So we as a nation, we grew, you know, and we became a mighty nation. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared the Most High, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save a life. Because you know, if these uh, you know these, these 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 Egyptians, if they would lay down with our uh, with our with our females, you know, our females would bring forth basically Egyptians, you know, Mizraim, you know, basically uh, you know Hamites, you know. So Pharaoh knew about this. He knew that a nation was determined by the man. And we're going to prove that as well with another account in the book of. Uh, uh, um, the second Samuel, second Samuel, twenty fourth chapter. You know, also showing you like a the reason that Esau Edom, the so called white man, should have neither son nor nephew, you know, is because his nation has to be exterminated. You know, in uh, after a thousand years, because as long as there are men children in life, you know, they're able to to reproduce and bring forth children, you know, to keep their nation alive. So this is uh, the book of Second Samuel. Chapter 24, verse, uh, verse 1. And again, the anger of the Lord Jehovah was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. You know, because actually we're not, to, uh, we're not supposed to number the children of Israel. You know. Verse 2. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. You know, so King David told, you know, Joab, you know, basically, hey, I want you to, to number all the people, you know, number them for me. You know, so he can know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord Jehovah that power, add unto the people how many soever they be, an hundredfold, that the eyes of, of my lord the king may see it, but why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? 
you know so basically job was trying to um you know uh, persuade king david otherwise notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against joab and against the captains of the host and joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to none but the people of israel and they passed over jordan and pitched in Aroer, on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of gad and towards jazer then they came to gilead and to the land of Tathim, Hotshai, and they came to Dan Jayan, and about to Zidon, and came to the stronghold of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites, and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah, and to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king, and they were in Israel, eight hundred thousand valiant men that drew the sword and the men of judah were five hundred thousand men you see so this shows you that the nation of israel you know was 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 basically uh, is determined by the men you know and not by the females so it's a man that determines the nation and not the female so it doesn't matter what nation uh, you as a man lay down with the child that comes out of her womb is what your nation is, is going back to. You know, so if you are an Israelite, all the children that you beget with, it don't matter what na what other nation, your children will be Israelites. You see? Another account that I want to grab to give an example concerning this is... Um, is um, concerning um, you know, King Rehoboam. You know, this is uh, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 1, starting off at verse, uh, verse 1. The book of generation of Yahweh Shai, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Uh, come on. It's like uh, the book of generations of Yahweh Shai, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So this is a small... Um, well, not a very small list, but it's a list concerning the, the descendants... You know, all the way from King David and Abraham all the way to Yahweh Shai. But it also talks about, you know, King Solomon, that Solomon beget Rehoboam in verse uh, 7. And Solomon beget Rehoboam, and Rehoboam beget Abiah, and Abiah beget Asa. You see, and what I want to go into is, is I want to go into King, uh, King Rehoboam. Because, you know, if we go to King Rehoboam, we're going to find out that um, basically his mother was from a different nation. So this is uh, 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 21. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and 1 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord Jehovah did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nehemiah and Ammonitus. So the mother of, of, of King Rehoboam, you know, is what we know in this day and age as a so-called Japanese woman, you know. But we know that King, King Solomon you know, was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, you know. We also know that according to uh, Deuteronomy, we're not supposed to set a king over us that is not from you know another uh, um, another nation you know so this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17 if I'm correct verse verse 15 so this is Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse uh, Starting with verse 14, when thou art come unto the land which the Lord Jehovah thy power giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord Jehovah thy power shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother. So we were supposed to set a king over us that was from the nation of Israel. Not from any other nation, you know, proving and showing that even though King Rehoboam, his mother, 
was from a different nation, he himself still was an Israelite. You know, showing you with these scriptures that a nation is determined by the men and not by the females. You see? And that's the point that I wanted to bring out in this lesson. You know? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. And I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, who teach and rule well. And Shalom to the sincere Akshams, furnish truth and sincerity. Shalom.